Ready. So we'll call the uh, Conway Select Board meeting to order. It's six o'clock on November December, uh, December uh, 10th at 6 p.m. Uh, so the first item on our agenda, well, the first item on the agenda is we want to thank FCAT here for coming in and taping us. And soon it will be available both on channel 12 and on uh, FCAT through YouTube. If you go to FCAT Media, you can look at all of our old board meetings. They're all up on YouTube. So first we have approval of the minutes. Do I have, have you? Did you read the minutes? But the minutes were very good. I thought they were fine. <laughs> Your phone approves. So do I have a motion to approve the minutes? I'll move to approve the minutes. Uh, uh, and I guess I get the second. You do. So, so uh, all in favor? Yes. Me too. So that's good. Uh, we have three uh, warrants that we signed tonight. Uh, a vendor warrant for 162,210, a payroll warrant for 128,675, and a payroll deduction warrant for 30,204. So, do I have a yep. motion to approve them? I'll move to approve the three warrants as discussed above. And I'll second them. So, all in favor? Yes. So, they're all signed. So, meetings attended by select boards this week. What was your um, busy week? Yeah, for, for me, the teacher negotiations have started, so that's about at least one a week now for the next two or three months for uh, teachers and IAs at the Frontier and Conway School Districts. Um, he's, yeah, and uh, went to the Building Renovation Subcommittee uh, meeting as well for Frontier High School and went to the Garage Committee here in this room, which unfortunately I had to leave right when the discussion was getting the juiciest. <laughs> but um, uh, I think that was enough. That was plenty. Yes, yes. So I, we, I, had, uh, I had my usual one, so I had two of the same ones Phil mentioned. Uh, yes, we had a, a Frontier Capital Subcommittee meeting and uh, so what this is about, it's, you know, we, we've talked about this before. Frontier came to the select board close to, what, a year ago with a very large bill of mostly deferred maintenance and other big capital projects, wondering how we could get this done. And so we've sort of laid out a plan of borrowing and taking money from taxes or somehow paying for it that we're talking to all of the finance committees about now and how we're going to do this over the next about 10 years to try to get these projects done. And, and also, hopefully, how we're not going to get into this hole again. So uh, we keep coming a step closer. We, we're not quite there. We, we made a couple changes to it. And the next week, we'll be having another meeting to go over what we think is going to be the final plan. Um, about a week and a half ago, we had the Franklin County Selectmen's Association dinner. Uh, up in Greenfield at the golf course. So it was mostly a goodbye party for Steve Kulik. Uh, Steve is leaving and, and uh, we all got to talk, talk about Steve Kulik's story. Steve has been our state rep for 25 years and we got to tell funny stories about Steve. So that was very nice. Um, about a, uh, middle of this week, I went to a cybersecurity preparedness put on by Homeland Security, uh, a, a, a conference down at UMass. It was very well attended. I was kind of surprised, but they had pretty good food. So I think that helped. Um, and mostly it was, it was people from Homeland Security and the state police trying to encourage people to worry about getting hacked, about getting our websites hacked, about getting our town computers hacked. And they had, uh, it was mostly for much larger towns than Conway and the kind of damages that uh, hackers can do when they break into your computers. But Shootsbury got hacked. Yeah, so I'm sure it happens. Uh, uh, I also came to the same highway, highway meeting that Phil was at. It was another meeting in the highway garage. Um, that meeting was mostly meeting with Andrea Lamas 
who came in and a lot of the talk about the highway garage this year has been about how Buckland did it and and she told a much more complicated story of all of the ways that Buckland tried to do it and failed and uh, and has very strong opinions of how she thinks we ought to do it and and I hope she comes to town meeting and can explain you, you know probably will be able to answer some of the questions dealing with all of the rumors about how Buckland managed to do theirs. So it was excellent having her here. Uh, so that was it for me. Not too busy. Anymore. Excellent report. <laughs> you too. <laughs> okay. Uh, public comment. So you guys are on the agenda, so you don't have to be the public quite yet. So, so I think and you're not here as the public. Yeah. So, okay. Mm -hmm. No public comment. So old business. So the first thing or the only thing on our old business is we were going to hear from the highway committee. The highway committee was going to come in and talk to us about their progress on a, on a large but not gigantic solar project that, that's sort of aimed at going behind the grammar school that would be a solar co-op um, that would be uh, constructed by uh, a plan similar to the one that's in process up in Wendell and uh, Greg Garrison is really was excited to be doing it here in Conway because the one up in Wendell looks like it's gotten blocked by the fact that Eversource wants a gigantic amount of money to rebuild their substation uh, their their typical business has been to to wait until somebody comes to build a project that would exceed their substation capacity and then charge them a gigantic amount of money to rebuild their substation and then have that petitioner balk and say they can't afford that and then the project doesn't happen. And it's one of the ways Eversource has been blocking a lot of solar from being built in not just Western Mass. but And so Greg has been talking to Coleraine and Conway about building a solar co-op here in Conway, and it looked like a wonderful way for us to build solar behind the grammar school. Um, but in the last week, uh, all, of the, all of the solar capacity for Western Mass for projects larger than residential solar were sold within just a couple days. They opened it up for sale, and the entire capacity in Western Mass got sold out. So right now, all of the solar projects, larger than residential projects, are stopped. So I, I printed out, just for the heck of it, anybody wants to see them, but this is, the, this is sort of a, a sheet of the, 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 uh, the capacity that was offered and Western Mass, unfortunately, was only offered a very small amount of solar capacity. And all of the capacity that was supposed to last for four years to get sold, all sold in a few days. And the utilities decide what our capacity is going to be? They decide how much we're allowed to have. Bastards. Well, you could say it's the DPU, however you want to think of it, but, you know, it's, it's the the plan. Eastern Massachusetts has a lot more, but we in Western Massachusetts, where we have, where we have places to build lots of solar, we only got a very tiny amount. Um, so, uh, uh, and Greg Garrison, uh, uh, so his project is stopped because of the capacity sold out, and the Nexam project in Southern no way. Conway no way. is being blocked by the same reason. Oh, so, how do we protest this? So I did, I did write, send an email to Nexamp to ask them what we can do, and they're very appreciative that we would consider doing something, and they will let us know. So they're, they're trying to think about what their strategy is going to be. It's mostly going to take going to Adam Hines and Natalie Blay and, and you know, all of the senators, state senators here and, and, and reps here in Western Mass, and we need a legislation change. So, so this is very depressing, but <sighs> nothing, you know, that, it's the state of those projects. So the, so the Energy Committee is not here today. Greg isn't coming. 
price isn't coming. It's very sad. Okay, new business. Um, the match for the highway message board grant. You want to talk about that? Yep. Well, the highway department applied for a grant through Maya. Aren't you? Uh... We were maximum grant is ten thousand that they they go up to ten thousand. We were awarded the grant, except well, the what we're looking for is a lighted message board sign so that we can let residents know when we're like paving and and then just normal everyday working out there, give a heads up when we're in a high traffic area. Um, the sign that we picked out, figured out that we would work for us was 14,500. And we were asked for 10,000, which is their maximum amount that my uh, issues. Unfortunately, they only awarded us 7,500. But because I can't spend over $5,000 without your approval, that's what I'm asking is to, because it's going to cost me seven thousand dollars now instead of five. So seven thousand exceeds the five thousand that would make it a capital project, and we would yes. have to go before the capital uh, improvements committee. But there's a um, time frame. There's a uh, yeah. The, the the time frame it it has to the project has to be completed by April, and we're not going to vote on things at town meeting until May. Yeah. yeah. So this would have to go quicker than through that process. So, stupid question number one, is, um, what, um, what's, is there anything really special about the 14,000 option that you chose and is there a suitable option that's slightly less? Or? We're looking, but what we submitted, because it fit our needs for what you can do with the sign, um, that's why we submitted this one. Um, there's not much, it's almost the bottom of the line. There's, we found one other one, but it wasn't quite as capable of what we want out of the sign for like $1,000 less. We're also talking to the company, trying to see if we can get some kind of bigger discount. And we're still working on it, but we're trying to move this thing forward. And so it's, it's, and like the, the, it's, like, it's like the big metal thing that you tow behind and you prop at the side of the yeah. road and and you have messages and you need batteries to run and yes yeah there these are this yeah. one that we're looking at is a solar powered one so there's no generator or nothing on it so in your solar budget is the generator well, whatever uh, yeah. but it also has a battery yes yeah. in your budget you have the the forty five hundred yes so and you need. So you need about two thousand more. Correct. Which I still, I can conceivably still take it out of my budget. I mean, it's just a huge benefit, and actually, um, we're gonna because I would like two of these signs. So next year, if if this one moves forward, I'm gonna reapply for another one, so we can have two, just because it makes it easier both when you're, ways. Both ways when you're doing projects. It's been a, putting signs up for our projects has been a big help. You know, if we can get them up a week, two weeks before, like our big projects with paving and stuff. So it just makes it, would make it a lot easier to make it more known mm. with, one, yeah. with with these signs. So, so where would we get 2,500 bucks? I, I, I can take it out of my budget. Um, I just can't do it without your approval. To spend because it is a capital, because it's over the five thousand dollar. I see. Right. right. So I just need your approval to say yes, it's okay to go ahead with the project. So do I have a motion? Uh, you can make a motion too. But, uh, okay, I will make a motion that we approve the uh, that that we approve that Ron can spend the five thousand. No, seventy. Seven seventy five hundred. Seven thousand, seven thousand dollars um, to buy it by a sign. Subject to an attempt to get the same thing for a lower price first. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah. up to seven. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, at least so you, did, did you get that correct? Up to seven. Up to seven. Yeah. 
And who made the motion? So I made the motion. Okay. Phil seconded it. All in favor? Yes. Me too. Thank you very much. It'll be a big help to the town. Thank you. All right. For getting that grant. Yeah. 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 Good job. Maybe ten thousand next year. Yeah. No, next year. Uh, no, I think we should be celebrating for seventy five hundred. Yeah, really. <laughs> you know, to get to get yeah, anything from the off. state. Yeah. Well, this is from an insurance company, not the state. Mm. For my, you're right. You're right. Yeah. So it does them a lot of good. Trip. Thank you much. Have a good Thank night. you. I make sure our department heads all get the uh, request for grant proposals from Maya. Excellent. Ron followed up. Excellent. So more new business. W would you guys like to go right up to the front of the line, or do you want to wait for Tom, or do you, you know? Do you know? I mean, this is all interesting to me. So oh, great. Mind. Well, I we'll just. I probably well, want to hang out. Just, we'll just, we've already. Yeah. We're almost there. You've already signed the December stipend forms because we did that under the payroll warrant. Uh, have we? So have we signed those? We haven't okay. signed them actually. There. No. Yes. Yes. That would be here. That would be those. I signed them. You haven't. No. I, okay. Well, I'll sign them at the end of the meeting. Okay. Well, okay. You, well, in that case, uh, vote to uh, vote to approve them. So okay. okay. So so we have we should, we have we, we, these we, are just uh, semi-annual stipend forms for all. So, so uh, many people who don't actually get. get semi-annual stipends. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Some people only get one at the end of the year. So, so, the so let's annual. have a motion to approve the 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 annual is there a total amount stipend for forms. There is not a total amount. Okay. Sorry. Um, They're all in different departments. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'll move to approve the fiscal year 2019 Town of Conway stipends. Okay. And I'll second okay. it. There you go. All in favor? Yes. Aye. Me too. I'll sign them after the meeting. Okay. okay, so that's great. So the the biggest item that we're here to talk about today is the uh, our marijuana um, host agreement policy. So we're creating a, we have to create a, one of the things we have to do is create a policy under which we can work with people who are here who want to um, start a marijuana business in town. And, and if I can just mention, you have two items in front of you. One of them is uh, a draft uh, host agreement application policy for Conway, which was taken directly from the draft marijuana host agreement application policy of Buckland. Since then, Buckland has finalized its marijuana host agreement application policy, uh, and it's slightly different from what I sent out as the draft for Conway, but that, that was just to get the conversation started. You know, I don't anticipate any, any action uh, now, certainly. Uh, but now you have both of them in front of you, the, uh, the draft um, one as it appeared in Buckland, which is the one that's on Conway letterhead, and the final Buckland one on Buckland letterhead. So, so yeah, if you could look at the, the differences between those for, for a discussion next time, that would be very helpful. So I've gone through and then looked at, looked at both of them, and, and when you say slightly modified, slightly is right. I mean, you know, there is virtually no modification. Is Tom here? Lesser? Is Tom Lesser here? Oh, no. Oh. Is he coming? We're thinking he's coming. All right, is this open to the public? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have a seat. So yeah, we're, you get we're, a good chair. Yeah. <laughs> so over there, you won't actually be on camera, but we are being taped. Our select board meetings are all available, open to the public, and they are all uh, broadcast on uh, Frontier Community Access Television, Channel 12, and uh, of, of Comcast. And they're on... Uh, YouTube, if you go to the FCAT Media YouTube channel, you can find all of our select board meetings there. They'll be there, this is a tape, and they'll be there tomorrow or the next day. Great. So my proposal is that we're gonna, we're gonna read this plan, which is very short. We're gonna read the plan because our goal today 
is to let everyone in town know what this plan says. Unfortunately, John is not here today, so we're not going to have a big discussion about it until the next meeting when John is going to be here. So I had actually asked before this was even on the agenda and before I knew that they were coming, whatever, that, um, that we not vote on these, because what I wanted to do is sort of um, get, get sort of a, a, an idea of what we want out of a policy before, and, and then there's been so many host agreements throughout the state and there's a lot more than just Buckland to uh, to crib from. Right. And um, and ju just to clarify, this is not um, anything about the content of a host agreement. Right. Th this is all about the process that the select board would use to accept a host agreement. Um, so that's uh, I think I think that's important too. And I'm still not. I, I still wouldn't, you know, ask you to take any action on this at this point anyway, just because it's it, it's new. Um, I'll also point out there's a typo uh, at the very bottom. Um, it says uh, withhold support or, so, uh, and that I'll, should be withhold support I'll read support it correctly for. when I read it. Uh, so that should, that should be for yeah. instead of or um, in, in both copies. I, I, I believe that that's the, the intent of that. So, so this is the draft of the plan. Well, to give people an idea of what we're talking the about. The application policy, policy for the plan. Yes. It, not the plan. It, it, it is not a host to community agreement. It has nothing to do with the content of a host community right. agreement. It is the process for dealing with a host community so agreement. Shouldn't we be dealing with the home host agreement itself as well? Uh, well, we don't have one, and it would help to have a policy to deal with it, as the content of this will make clear. So yes, absolutely, but not until we have one, and and this will, this this lays out how that process. So where does the host agreement come from? The uh, applicants. So so do we tell them what we want in our host agreement? I mean that is. It's a negotiation. That is part of what this policy does, right. but it is a negotiation between the two parties. Because in here, the only place I saw the host agreement mentioned was they give us a draft of a host agreement. Well, you, you, you'll... Okay, so let me read this. This is not very long, so let me just read it because I want people in town to know what we're talking about, what the plan, what the process is like. And this is not cast in stone. This is just what we're, t what we're talking about. And I'm going to substitute the word Conway for the word Buckland. And, and, and let me do that. So, are you? Oh, you're you're using Buckland's final. Yes, I am. Time. Okay, I mean you'll put in Frontier and all of that. All that. Okay. Okay. Because okay. then it will sound well, more like what we're talking about. Well, the difference yeah. is, as you say, we're slight. The different. Yes. Okay. So this is the town of Con. This is uh, written by. This is from the town of Conway Select Board. It's our marijuana host agreement application policy. It, it might be if you decide yeah, yeah, yeah. to. It, it's a draft. It. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So it says, in order for the select board to consider negotiating and executing a final host agreement and letter of support to the Cannabis Control Commission for a prospective marijuana license, the following tasks must be completed. So there's going to be three tasks. So the first one, the applicant must publicize and hold a community outreach meeting as specified by the Cannabis Control Commission regulations. The meeting notice should be publicized in the Greenfield Recorder and the event should be recorded and broadcast by Frontier Community Access Television. So Dan, you can look forward to that. In addition to the required notifications in the regulations, notification of the event should be sent to the Frontier Regional School District. The outreach meeting has to include, but is not limited to, discussions on the following. The type of business being proposed. The size and type of structure for the facility. Neighborhood and environmental impacts, including but not limited to lighting, noise, odor, water, usage, traffic, et cetera, and any studies or data to support those conclusions. And steps or assurances on measures that will be taken to reduce or mitigate any of the identified impacts. 
So that's what will be discussed in the outreach meeting. After completing task one, the applicant must submit to the select board a package that contains the following. A summary of the community outreach meeting, including but not limited to the above. Copy of the draft license application to the Cannabis Control Commission. An explanation or demonstration of how the applicant will comply with any other apl applicable licenses or permits as may be required by Conway Board and Commissions, if applicable, including information regarding compliance with uh, Conway zoning bylaws. And they provide us with a draft host agreement. And so, this, so when we get that draft host agreement, then that kicks off the negotiation of, of our host agreement. And the applicant will submit a five, $5,000 that will be held in escrow by the town to cover legal costs for the review of the applicant's submission to the select board. And the select board will not undertake to begin any review or negotiation until such time as the funds are received and deposited by the Conway treasurer. The town will track all use of those funds and supply an accounting for all expenditures attributed to the account and return any unused funds. And then finishes by saying the select board reserves the right to withhold support for engaging in a host community agreement if, that, if it deems that it's not in the best interest of the citizens of Conway. So yeah, that's, that's not vague at all. So that's so this is so this is the plan essentially that Buckland used for, for handling their uh, um, process for getting host agreements from people who want to build uh, marijuana facilities in Buckland. So what we originally hoped was that Tom uh, Tom would be here that that, that John O'Rourke would be here today. Uh, who who wants to be part of this, neg the, this negotiation? He he does, and uh, and 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 he's not here today. He couldn't be. He got caught in Boston. And he couldn't get out. So 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 he'll be here in two weeks. So we want to we want to postpone having this negotiation for two weeks. This is not a negotiation. Oh oh, oh yeah, H having this discussion among us. Yes. Yeah. Um, but. It's a good. It's still a good place for you to speak and introduce yourselves and uh, share some thoughts or ideas that you may have. I don't know how much. I don't know how much we can interact with you because we can't like talk about votes that we're going to take before like it's on the uh, whatever. But I mean, um, you can also ask questions yeah. of us if you want any. Yeah. Information well, just. Yeah, I, I think we'd be interested in your take on the application process because that's what's under discussion right now. So. Um, if you have any of those, you can you can say them now or email me later. And, and um, I know it's the first time you. This is the first time I, I don't know. You, you might have seen the Buckland. I, I read the Buckland yeah. already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's it's the same thing. So, yeah. Um, assuming you're here for the same reason. I have a question. <laughs> what is your plan? <laughs> what is our plan? Well, it depends on what the town wants to a large degree. It's a, it's a fast-moving industry with a lot of things developing and there's a lot of directions that I have experience with that I'm open uh, to pursuing. Um, yeah, but our okay. plan right now is... So, is, so what, what, is I think what Tom is saying, that that's not what the agenda right. is. The that's agenda is this. That's right. So what our plan is is not relevant. You, you guys are welcome to chat at any yeah. time. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, and, and, and next week, or when, when, you know... I would say, I, would say um, I don't really understand why there's a $5,000 fee here. Um, it's already pretty burdensome, the amount of uh, legal costs that we're already going to have to go through to, to just get to the point of, like, sealing a deal. Um, I think the town should also consider that for every dollar that we have to spend, we have to raise that in investor capital, and that means that um, there's a multiplier effect in, in essence for how much uh, money leaves the town <laughs> and goes to our investors as opposed to, you know, I would be more interested in an agreement 
uh, and a plan that tried to get the town a sustainable and long-term source of revenue. Um, my, yeah, my, my impression is, is that figure was um, uh, put there mainly for potential legal fees and that this has to cover any facility that comes into the town. So a more complex facility, um, I don't know how complex your facility is, but a complex facility uh, might entail more legal review um, than another one. And that's, uh, that is a, certainly a point that can be discussed. Could it, um, could it be amended for um, non-residents? It would be, well, I think anything, the idea is increased for non residents. <laughs> um, uh, it's, it's, it's kind of for, for any kind of zoning, uh, not, not this is a zoning issue, but for, for most zoning issues, most zoning um, uh, applications, the, the, there is a requirement to uh, put up some sort of payment for the t to cover the town's legal fees. Yeah. That the I mean, town it would seems reasonable. I mean, the, the 5000 seems reasonable. It's right? only stuff that the but town would incur just to like look, not like to pay the lawyer for the town's like yearly bills or whatever. It's okay. just like just to look at whatever you would bring before the town. They can only use it for directly for you. For our business. Yes. And their business relating to our business. Yes. Right. But so I mean that's like well, um, Yeah, and it it's not a large per se a large sum, but I would wonder if you were a, a, a farmer looking to uh, experiment with with a, a garden next year, that it could that could be pretty burdensome. And you know, that's my critique of the whole law: that it's obviously not written for the local farmer; that no. it's obviously written for the hedge fund backed, right. um, you know, groups, and those are the ones that are cashing in so far. And that's and, and that's our problem: is that we have to bring in a lot of capital to get this done. But and that's. Um, Supposedly, in later iterations, it's supposed to be coming easier for the local. Yeah, farmer. after the market's been cornered, <clears throat> and that is. Well, uh, we definitely could look at other towns and see what other towns have done. Um, um, I, I'm sure that you know. I, th this is a, you know, the, the uh, all the other towns have created a plan like this, and and uh, you. Know, I don't know. I, I have no idea what the legal expenses would be. I mean, I don't think the legal expenses should be borne by the town. If we if we have to have Certainly. you know if we have to do work, if the town has to do work to review your host agreement uh, or your application, so and I have no idea what that would come to. And if it was in excess, well, then we would come back to you for more. I assume, but I this but. I have no idea how far $5,000 would go. Yeah. Um, shouldn't be that. Uh, shouldn't and, shouldn't uh, get anywhere close to that. Yeah, uh -huh. it, it really shouldn't. Yeah. Well, and it's again, it, it, it depends on the complexity of the operation. Right. Okay. And the, the, my take on host community agreements is that they're all over the place in the state, that some, some are really quite demanding and some are really quite uh, and restrictive, and some are really quite accommodating. Right. And I don't, um, uh, you know, I, I, I don't have any like set opinions on that. But I, I do know that um, when when I went to a seminar, they held up the city of Salem as the as the, the as the uh, uh, I don't know the best for town that the, the best way to go as an example, and that's available on the internet. But they. But that 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 had the the uh, provider paying for a school psychologist position, um, uh, and that had the the provider doing all kinds of infrastructure stuff, and you know and that maybe made sense when they were the first one in the state and they were making millions of dollars per year, and I don't know how much of that still makes sense when. Waitley and Deerfield are going to be online before us, maybe. And um, the only thing that makes sense for the town right now is to have the application process as fast as possible. That's basically it. But yeah. you know, that's. But part of it is 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 for me sort of how you know, the the need to demonstrate that it's good for the town, not because the, there are a large percentage of the people that. Um, you know, just the, the tax revenue enough. It, that's not like what pe what people are looking for in well, it. And it well, all of this is why I really wanted John to be part of this because you know I really want the whole select board to have this discussion. 
uh, and 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 we can do it all in two weeks, or you know when when he's here. Uh, yeah. So be, so uh, again, if you if you want to write in comments or anything like that, um, that'll be fine. I can include them in the packet I send to the select board. Uh, and, and you want, could you tell us? I mean, I'm not sure if this is answering your question, but you know how big an operation or how do you have. Any idea? I mean, so if we were if, if we were to no, look at towns no, no, no. and look, and look at other what plans, tier? The, the, sure. uh, tier three would be. Um, and what does that mean? Square footage. That's about twenty thousand square foot of cultivation space. However, that um, yeah, you know, the way it's calculated, it can be a, a slightly larger area because you're talking about canopy, um, and part of the operation would be in a greenhouse. Uh, and the majority of it would be outdoors, outdoors. and the goal is to try and do uh, a phased zero carbon um, plan. So that would take a while to unfurl that, but that's the, the goal, which is pretty ambitious, and we're reaching out to the um, to natural sciences at Hampshire College to try and, because they have a lot of zero carbon stuff going on. So that's. So, do you, do you know of any towns that have that kind of cultivation planned? If we could go to those towns and find out. Deerfield. Is, I mean, is that what's being Deerfield planned down at Deerfield? Yeah, we, we could go to them and maybe look at a host agreement that they have or find out, you know, how much legal work it took to, to do that. Great. We can do that. Yeah, and if you know of any others you want us to look at again, you can write us and we'll look at them over the next couple of weeks. Yeah, yeah. Great. And, and, Great. Sort of, and sort of think about how within the process you can sort of demonstrate like a commitment to the people and to the community. Like, and and that's, that goes like beyond just money. And just, so that's kind of like what I'm looking at. Like, and I know like, you know. Well, it would um, be part of the host agreement, right? I, I know, but yeah. that's... I mean, okay. we're it's looking like, to do as much for the town as possible. Um, that's my primary interest where, where, where I'm at in my head. Uh, it's just... And so there, there's, like, there's like the idea and then there's the translation of the idea into like work. There's the investors <laughs> yeah. that want a huge return. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And that's, and that's the limitation. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so I'm gonna, we're gonna we, can, we can table finalizing this plan uh, I'm going to make a motion that we that we continue this when John is here, and maybe that'll be two weeks, and hopefully, but at our next meeting. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll, you, I'll put it on the next agenda. That's fine. You don't need to. So can I get a second for the motion? Uh, uh, sure. I don't think you need so, a motion to do that, but yeah. Sure. Okay. Aye. All right. Yes. Thanks. Beautiful. So I'm sorry we didn't get this done. We had it on our agenda for today. Um, and I know you're in a hurry. Uh, I was not expecting it to be. Oh, okay. Well, I, what I wanted was I wanted to I, I wanted to read this so the people in town now can mm -hmm. can comment on it, mm -hmm. and they have an idea of what we're working on. Oh, Cause, absolutely. Because for all of us, absolutely. I mean, I don't know why you're here, but but for all of us, this is really brand new. You know, this is, we have not been through this before. You guys are our first opportunity. Uh, I, I, I don't want you to think no, you're not. I have been through this before. Oh, okay, but no, none of us have. So this is this is you know a welcomed opportunity for revenue for Conway. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. And okay. A good, and a good way of keeping Conway revenue from going to all of our neighboring towns. <laughs> yeah. Great. Okay. Keep the faith. Non-recurring federal holidays. Yeah. Yeah, that was, and uh, I, I have to apologize for jumping the gun on this when I was in the middle of a training and didn't think it through before I sent off a, a, a an email. Um, it's very unusual to get a, uh, a federal holiday that's not in our personnel handbook. Um, but, you know, um, Theoretically, the town gets federal holidays, town employees get federal holidays off, but they are also listed very specifically, you know, which ones. Um, and, uh, did you? Um, Lisa, did you get, get guest name? Thank you. Great. So the, um, yeah, yeah. Okay. 
Uh, I don't know that this would ever actually come up again, but since it might, um, I just wanted to. So what's to, an example of an extraordinary federal holiday? Well, let's say a day of mourning for George H.W. Bush. Uh, okay. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, okay. And, uh, you know, again, I, I don't ever recall that having happened before. And I, I don't know that it would or it wouldn't, but it's just something that uh, is a policy question that at some point, I think, you know, the board should, should come up with. There was um, discussion on the Mass Municipal Personnel Association email list. There was an early indication that some towns might be doing it. Later, that was reversed, and out of 16 towns who responded, it turned out that none of them, none of them did that. So by did so, that, you mean none of them granted their employees the day off? Right. It was an active because of discussion a, because of for a federal a holiday. And, and some, some uh, well, I, and I can't say that quite. Some, uh, some unions have all federal holidays written into the contract. Mm -hmm. So they would get it off. Um, but uh, nobody outside of those circumstances got it off. So some people did get it off, but only union employees where it was in the contract. So and and at this point, I don't see any reason to do it. And and I will also uh, I uh, ensure that I never jump the gun again uh, in that way. So I apologize for that. So you you're proposing we don't take any action on this. Well, I I for don't now. see. I don't see any reason to include it at this point. And really, um, what we're talking about is updating the the our policy manual. Yeah, it, that that would that would that would be it. But the, the but deciding on the policy, I don't right, see any right. reason to do it. Other towns were not doing it unless it was mandated by a union contract. And it, it's not it's even a, it's, it's a, not even clearly in such a benefit to that many employees that it, as many employees as it might be a benefit to. There's as many employees almost as it would be a detriment to because they're missing out on those hours. Exactly. And so yes, it, it's a holiday for your salaried people. And, uh, and some of your hourly people, enforced, but not for others. An enforced, yeah. involuntary day off for most of the rest. And, mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and, and you, you couldn't anticipate it because right. it, it's non-recurring. So it is, it is problematic. So, yeah, um, at this point, I, w I, w uh, I wanted to bring it up, but I also yeah. would recommend against it yeah, me too. at this point. But ha so having a, um, and, and uh, it's conceivable you could wait until John came back to finalize that, but... Um, I don't think we need to, I don't think, I think it's man. that yeah. big a deal. Okay. But, um, but, but it sounds like, yes, it would certainly be good for us to have decided it in plenty of time to have let people know what was going to happen. And, uh, if, and the nature of the event was such that... Right, right. And it, that kind of event, you can't. So It didn't. Yeah, yeah and, you know, if, if it does become more of a custom, um, Again, it's something that I don't I don't see. Um, it, it 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 is relatively disruptive in a number of ways. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you didn't get your mail, but that probably wasn't the end of the world. You know? It came the next day. So. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So well, so I'll make a motion that we table this for now. Sounds like you agree, Phil. Yeah. Sure. Oh. Second. Second. Aye. Aye. So we'll table that. So the next one has to do with December 24th and and uh, December 31st. Yeah, John. The Monday and, uh, before Christmas and New Year's. Yes, so and there. and John had sent an email around um, asking that that be on the agenda. Yeah. So, you know. Uh, when I look at the number of towns that are getting those days off, I do see other towns that are granting their employees Mondays off. Yeah, I did. I sent around. You the, did. I uh, appreciate it. And that also was from the Mass Municipal Personnel Association. There, okay. there are a lot of surveys like this that are taken, so towns can, you know, see where they stand. Uh, that said, you know, uh, there's no way to get a response from all of the cities and towns. So all you have are the cities and towns who actually responded to the right. survey. Uh, so it's not. Um, 
But there was a huge variation in what different towns were doing. Well, Some yes. towns were yeah, there do, usually are. doing a yeah, half a day yeah. off or a full day off or, you know, no, or doing nothing. You know, it was a work day. So. Um, I did get one comment from an employee that getting half a day off um, probably wouldn't. It, it, it would be a little bit problematic because if you were going to do something for a four-day weekend in that case, um, you'd have to come in for half a day in the middle of it. Um, but So if Christmas you know, I, wasn't I, I on a Tuesday, think half does, a day the town, is half a day. does the town do anything for people on Christmas Eve? You know, let people out early? or We, there, we, have, no, we have no uh, policy on that, we, it, so it's not, it's not part of our practice currently. See, and, and like, uh, this is another one of those things where you give, to some people, it's a day off. To some people, it's an involuntary, uh, you know, uh, mandatory day without pay. That, well, you know, um, and, and, and uh, it is on the agenda as a paid holiday. So this, 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 would, be, this would be paid if, they, if people were scheduled to work. The only time you wouldn't benefit is if you weren't scheduled to work that day anyway. So even uh, our people who were hourly person. would get paid for their normal, their normal salary. That, that, that was the proposal that, that that John sent out. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah. Or, or, no, I, I, I believe it was, and it certainly wouldn't make sense again if it weren't. Yes. Right. right. Um, I. I don't. I don't like this sort of thing, but. Um, it, you know, I understand John's in favor of it. I, I, I don't know about you, but um, which is another thing. John's, John's email about this was expressed his opinion. Yes, and um, yes, yeah. Um, open meeting law stuff. But, um, well, but yeah, yeah, but yeah. Um, uh, you know, I, I, I the the contracts are negotiated, the agreements are negotiated, the town, the policies are negotiated, the manuals negotiated, everything is set. No, our, our personnel policy is not negotiated. Oh, well. Sorry. All right. Yeah, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> uh, to, just to be clear, no, we do not negotiate our personnel policy. Oh, on the and, town side. You know, I, um, I, I, I can sort of get the, the, um, the desire to have off the, I, I, I sort of get the, the Christmas Eve thing, but um, New Year's Eve, um, that's, that's not that usual. I, I thought that there was a lot more there in that thing. There was a lot more. There was quite a few that had closed for Christmas Eve and were open New Year's Eve. <clears throat> and um, uh, to, to go straight to being closed both days would make us one of the more generous communities in this whole list, and that includes many towns wealthier and bigger than us. Um, so but that that might that might make it easier to provide this benefit as well. But um, so do you want to propose propose that? Yeah, like this. That'd be okay. All right. Do do one, but not the other. So we'll propose that the Monday off before Christmas. Right. And the Monday before New Year's will be a normal work day. Yeah. I'd second that. Okay. And so Motion. okay, clear yes, you're in favor, and yes. I'll say aye, and so moved. So there's a compromise, and I think that's great. All right, cool. Okay. Good. Uh, on behalf of the employees, thank you. <laughs> Very well. <laughs> Some year we'll do something for Hanukkah also. But, no. You know, it's, it, you know, it's unfortunate that the, the, this one holiday we seem to treat differently well, than actually, all the other holidays. There might be others but, that would be. Yeah. 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 Okay. A license renewal. We have to sign a license renewal for Baker's store. That we have in here? That should be. Yes, it is. So do we even, I assume we need to vote on this, so I'll make a proposal that we, we uh, renew Helen Baker's store's license. I'll, I'll second that for sure. Me too. Aye. Items not anticipated 48 hours in advance. So we only have one of those, which is also another signing, 
we are going to sign where did that one go did i get that one back oh it's over here sorry no it's not over here. We had discussed. Oh, it might be right here. That's yes. the one. We had so we we've already discussed this and we've already approved this. We just didn't have it printed out to sign. So it is signing the FERCOG uh, professional services agreement uh, for hazard mitigation plan yep. update. So this is something we sign every year. Uh, not every year. It's periodic though. Oh, periodic. Yeah. Okay. Thank God we don't have to do it every year. So I'm gonna. So we've already voted to sign this. Yes, yes. So well, a, a, a vote would. You haven't voted to sign this. You voted to approve the project. Okay, so, so I will need to sign. I think make a motion that we sign it. Yes. Aye. Second. Aye. Thank you. And today is the tenth. Still. Yes. The Still. Uh, the, the project was approved, uh, and we we did get a completed state grant. Uh, for this. So John could come in and sign this if he wants. Yeah, uh, if he wants. Before we get in the mail. No, they, they give him his own line, so he's chair. So. Uh, okay. And we have one other item not anticipated. Uh, we received a complaint about two weeks ago now about some loose horses on a residence. So we've, uh, we've been up there twice now. So Tom Solomon should appraise you as a select board of it. And um, we're still investigating our options as to how to pursue with and we have these chronic type of situations. Um, so this has happened before? It's happened before. It's happened uh, numerous times in the past. It's been pretty good for about a year, but it just happened twice in the past two weeks. Mm. We don't currently really have any statute, any bylaw that really specifically addresses large animals like that, uh, you know, the dog issues. But not large animals like horses. We used to. We used to have a fence viewer for the first 200 and something Fence years. viewers and field drivers, right. yeah. Yeah, so the, the field driver is a position that we might actually bring back and give the duties to the uh, animal control officer with an, a little bit of an increase in the stipend maybe. To so what's the field driver do? The field driver deals with large, large animals, animals and uh, can impound them. So he helps round them up? or? Oh, yeah. Yeah. We had them up until <laughs> up until recently, and who knew that we might actually need them? What's their fencing situation? Well, the last issue was the uh, the ground wire was off the electric fence, so it was according to them it was not working properly. So One of my neighbors put a bunch of steers on a field at my house, and uh, and they just jumped over the fence and were gone. Oh, I couldn't find them, and after about two hours, uh, a state police car was herding them down the Shelburne Falls Road. Mm -hmm. And once they saw the property, they came right back in and jumped back in over the fence. Mm -hmm. And he was a, a state policeman from Boston who was sent out here to Western Mass doing his first year duty. <laughs> and he'd, ne he'd never seen a, a cow in his life before, I think. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> but I, I would be up for a bylaw that spells out a minimum standard for fencing for large animals. I mean, uh, I'm just going to take a guess that it's a single strand. Yeah. Yeah, and that's not, you know, do, double stranded would, to me, is like an absolute minimum. I'm not, uh, I'm not a horse yeah, person and expert, I so I don't know. I've had horses all my life, and I've lost horses and seen them break fences. And mm. I know cattle get out. Saw one, pretty run, saw one run into the New Jersey Turnpike. That wasn't good. This would also apply to cows. Yep. So, 
we so, so do, you, do you think we need a bylaw? I mean, I wonder if I mean, that's... Well, you know, given the fact that we have <coughs> apparently given up our, our uh, fence viewers and our field drivers, um, I think we should probably look at something. You know, we currently have nothing in place. The bylaw could give you the authority to act. Could give any department yeah. head, yeah. Yeah. Um, whether it be the select board, the department head, the animal control, anything. So dogs are covered by specific regulations to dogs? Specific regulations in both the Mass General Laws and our own bylaws. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So dogs are, are pretty well covered. So I know a while ago we instituted a ticket system in Conway. It's not the same as the bylaw, but... And, and the uh, rules that, that cover dogs are not the same as the ones that cover large animals. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. So. so the only time we've talked about tickets have been with dogs, though. Well, at dogs, least in well, my... Any, actually, history. anything that would uh, be an infraction of our bylaws. Uh-huh. So a ticket probably wouldn't be appropriate... Well, I had bylaw? discussed this along with the animal control officer, and we couldn't really see where this would be applicable to our current system. Uh -huh. But we are still pursuing our other options, so we just figured we'd make you guys aware of it. Great. Uh, I mean, in the meantime, it's just the work for you. Uh, you oh, and the, and the ACL. And, you know, and um, we'll see what other the ways we can pursue it, if any. Know, legally, but uh, we want to be careful not to try to set a precedent that's going to affect everybody. Right. But uh, certainly, uh, if somebody is negligent and keeping up their fences, then you got to have some kind of a way to enforce it. Are there other towns that have a bylaw like that? I mean, we could find that out. Yeah, we can research it, but I haven't seen any. Mm hmm. Um, mm -hmm. But we can check with other towns and see if they have something currently in place. I mean, there's a lot of horses around. Oh, yeah. And, and once they start, once they realize that the electric fence isn't on, then they'll rub against it more and more. And then the, the it gets to a point where a single strand is just absolutely futile and that you need at least a double strand so that it just pushes against them, even with the electricity off. Um, and it, if you, you know, it's rebar, it's those plastic attachment. It's not, it's, you know, you, you can be dirt poor and still afford, and afford that and make that happen. But at the same time, there's situations where no matter how good your fencing is, if you have ground wasps, if you have things like that, the, the horse, will, the, they'll go through it. So, so if you have wind or whatever else, it's right. a branch down. Exactly, on, exactly. Ground it out. So it happens. Yeah. You have to certainly, certainly be aware of the fact that it, you know, natural occurrences can, can make it not effective. So that, that's what I would... So, you know, to, to me, that's what makes sense is something that we can handle ourselves. If we do our own bylaw, then we can handle ourselves. And that sounds like a better option. Than so who would pass the bylaw? Would that be the zoning board? Town, only town no, meeting can. Town meeting. Town meeting. But we do yeah. that in town meeting. So I, I, I can look around and I can continue to have this discussion with uh, uh, Ken and our, and our animal control and officer animal and see control. if I can work something up for town meeting. Great. So I, I did notice in the town website recently that the animal control officer wasn't listed in the list of all the boards and committees and oh, really? all of that. So Tom recently added it in be, be, because Phil's sheep got out last week and, and they called up wanting to make sure they knew who they should, you know, other than other than the police, you know, you know who, who can they call that might, you know, that somebody in Conway might call. I mean, you know, if somebody in Conway saw his police, they might, his sheep, they might. Where were your sheep? They were on North. Uh, North Poland. North Poland and Maine Poland? Yeah. So we're on Maine Poland. Yeah. They had wandered all the way up. They were heading towards Bullet Road. Well, I heard of them one day <laughs> last week. <laughs> Back down Maine Poland. That's <laughs> good. All right. Yeah, no, we spent all day working on the fences. Okay. To, to, Are you to at, sure. uh, at the old property? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, that's where we yep. determined it was the only place it made sense. <laughs> Yeah. Well, now you now you recognize him if you see him again. Yeah. But yeah. but but he called, wondering who who you know who should he call that somebody in town might call. Uh, say hey, I found, saw some sheep wandering around. Nobody else on Maine Poland knew who they belonged to. Says so there's the only one place left. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, great. All right, okay. thank you. Thank you very much. All right.
the town administrator's update. Huh. Any things? Uh, as has been mentioned already, the Highway Facility Committee last met last Wednesday and heard from Andrea Lamas, the town administrator for Buckland, about their process. They are now working on questions and answers regarding the project to address as many concerns as they can before town meeting. In departmental news, the town caucus warrant will be on the next agenda. The town clerk developed it early because there are so many positions to be voted. And the ambulance department is moving ahead with procuring the striker unit. This was uh, passed uh, at the last town meeting. The company they've been dealing with is on the mass state contract list, so that will eliminate needing a quotes process. So the striker unit, that was the defibrillator? Is that? Uh, no, this is, uh, this is a um, chest compression. Oh, no, not defibrillator, right. Yeah. Chest compression. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the ambulance director is looking into pricing from other companies so they will have a bargaining chip with Stryker, but she has worked with the company in the past and feels confident that they will be a good match for what the town needs for maintenance and service for the unit. And the Frontier main office is finally moving out of the Christian Lane building, which is sold, and I was able to get five excellent file cabinets with mm. the help of the highway department. That's great. They are now upstairs in the town hall. That's the file cabinets, not the highway department. <laughs> so, in other news, Good. the running club at Conway Grammar School is planning to host their uh, annual 5K fun run walk in the center of town again this spring. It would be the same route but have a different starting location, perhaps the library, so they don't interfere with any groups using the town hall. In the past, they have had between 70 and 100 participants. This year is planned for Sunday, May 19th, starting around 9 and finishing by 11. They would not need to use the facilities at either the town hall or the library. They'll use the porta potty. Hmm. And finally, Senator Heinz's aide will be in town Wednesday at the town hall from 11 to noon and at the town office here from noon to 1 p.m. There may be some interest from the Energy Committee in asking for the SMART program caps to be raised to allow for the possibility of a municipal or community solar project in town, as they've been working for one for some time, as was also mentioned earlier in this meeting. So that is so, my So news. did the town have to do anything for the fun run last year? No. I, re I remember we granted them permission or we to, to use the town hall there was a uh -huh. bit of a conflict with the group that was meeting there so they're uh, okay. staying away from that this year okay okay great great any more select board comments um, no thanks so. uh, mail I have two pieces of mail three pieces of mail so the first one is we have a, a holiday card from Adam Hines. It's very nice. Happy holidays. Signed Adam Hines. Uh, we have a, we all got a letter from uh, DLS. Um, yeah, the takeaway is on the bottom of the second page there. So, so we had a communication with them and we provided them with some feedback on notifying us about land sales. This, this was uh, an initiative of rural Commonwealth. Yeah. And they had a number of items that they were uh, asking towns to advocate for. And one of them was a better process of uh, uh, talking about uh, payments in lieu of taxes. So, and there's, there's a takeaway there where they say that they are willing to come out and talk about the issue. So that's a so bottom, bottom of the second page. I saw that, I said, let's bring yeah. them out here. Mm -hmm. But okay. they're also work people comment. I mean, they just send out a big gang notice of all of the land sales, and they were it was requested that they would have what they called single topic communication. Yeah. So they'll send yeah. ten towns and you know specific targeted emails, so you won't just throw it away, or you know it'll it'll be easy for you to find out. They'll they'll send us an email and, about our particular sale. Yeah. And I th I think to keep the 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 issue of um, of pilot agreements. It, 
you know, one of the things that I'd like to see is that the people that mean so well and want to conserve their land um, and, and take it off of tax rolls, uh, I would like to see people begin to get their, wrap their heads around the idea of providing for pilot agreements in those, in, in those conservation agreements as well. And um, because that, and, and uh, you know, I read t Tony Borton's profile the, today in the recorder, which was mm -hmm. lovely, and he's just such a dear, wonderful, lovely man. Um, but the, the, when, when he talked about how, you know, trees don't, shouldn't have to pay taxes uh, because they don't use, they don't send kids to school and things like that, um, uh, that's, the, that's an argument that I really like to deal with in public and, you know, because that's not, that, that's, you know, community is bigger than just your, the, your tree and your driveway and the, the, all of us have to fund these services that the entire town needs and when we make that smaller then the rest of us have to pay more. Um, so I didn't see I didn't see Tony's note in the recorder. So. Oh, it's a whole um, it's a front page profile. I I, I didn't see it. It was lovely. Uh, and and so uh, he's arguing that he should be paying even less taxes. No, no, he he he's he, all of his land is con, that's already is conserved and it's already conserved and it's a great p piece of land and it's, it makes a it's 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 a necessary sort of thing so that you can walk and conserve land from his place to Williamsburg um, because it's the corridor. His his land is like a corridor between. Uh, different state whatever and it's 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 good you know it's I'm all for conserving it but when when really well-meaning people like that when that that are so civic minded and have given so much to the town don't have it in their consciousness to think about pilot agreements as part of it mm. then I'm like we have some we have some salesmanship to do about this sort of thing because um, <clears throat> well I think what rural Commonwealth is interested in is something a little different so I mean that, well, that, so, so, yeah. I mean, so their problem is yeah. that the amount the town gets paid depends upon which state agency buys your land. And you have no control over which state agency buys your land. And some of the state agencies are quite generous, and some of the state agencies are much more miserly in what they offer in the way of a pilot agreement. And, and so there are some towns that get a lot less than other towns, depending upon which state agencies own the state-owned land in your town. But it, it points to the need for, a, for, for both better payments from the state and more of a recognition that um, towns that have a lot of money in some kind of tax relief status, uh, it, 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 affects their, it affects their budgets uh, substantially. Yes. And that and, said, I mean, not just the budget, I mean, e even a conservation restriction, they're still paying some taxes, but, um, and you, you, I don't think there's any getting around the fact that a number of people um, see themselves doing well by doing good, and it's a double benefit for them. Um, and, and, you know, I, th I think you're right about the need for the consciousness that, you know, the town still needs. Um, its uh, its financial base, but ha having a, the state forest in between Conway Center and Southern Conway really is a problem for town. Uh, the town, uh, you know, um, I mean, it's why it's the main reason why we had no broadband in Southern Conway for so long, and for us, fortunately, the state stepped in and and funded part of the cost, and Comcast funded the rest of it to build out Southern Conway. Whereas in other towns, they are having to pay most of it themselves. And it's a huge expense for the town to, to build the fiber optic infrastructure to get from their town center down into, <coughs> down through the state forests. I mean, you know, it's, it's lots and lots of distance you have to travel through a state forest to get to homes in your town on the other side of the state forest. Which brings us to another announcement, and I'll be happy to try to get uh, Sean Cronin or somebody from DLS out here to talk about a variety of issues. Um, but there are a couple of announcements, I believe, coming up. Uh, one of them is about uh, transportation. Uh, the other one is that I don't think we have a separate sheet on is there is a meeting of the Rural Policy Advisory Commission on Thursday evening from 5 to 7 at the, Franklin, at the uh, down, GCC Downtown Center in Greenfield. And they are very much looking for um, responses to their outline for uh, 
how rural issues differ from urban issues in the Commonwealth and how they can best be addressed through particular state attention. So I uh, would also urge people, even though uh, I'm kind of skipping to announce. I'll get this one next, uh, but yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I plan on going yeah. to that, and the only unfortunate thing there is it means you will miss Adam Hines' holiday party uh, in Pittsfield at the same time. So it's unfortunate that Adam scheduled his I've event. Got a, I've got a collective bargaining session. So we all have lots of meetings, yes, that's right. So. Okay, so. Uh, so we have one more, one more piece of mail uh, from FERCOG. Really an announcement. And, and, and so FERCOG is holding a, a regional transportation meeting to just get together and talk about what we need in the way of rural transportation. And there are four sessions, one in Colerain, one in Irving, um, one in Greenfield and one in Sunderland. So the two nearest us are Colerain and Sunderland. Uh, and they're, uh, the, Sun, the Colerain one is Tuesday, December 11th. So that's tomorrow. And uh, 5.30 to 7 at the Colerain Highway Garage. And the one in Sunderland that's quite near us is Wednesday, January 16th. And so that's 5.30 to 7 in the Sunderland Library. Wonderful place to hold meetings. So if people... And, th and this is very open to the public. This is not like focused on select board members or anything. So people that want to want to comment on their regional transportation needs, of which we have many, um, all the way from uh, you know rail to go Greenfield to Fitchburg or Springfield to Boston, uh, let alone FERTA, you know, bus routes and lots of them. So. So come and help give input to that. Our next meeting. Uh, Any other announcements? So, uh, yeah. I believe Wednesday, December 26th, uh, again, uh, you've, uh, you've given the town Monday off, so that's great. Um, the uh, warrants will be ready on Wednesday. So that should work. We've given the town December 24th off. 24th, right. So, so, so our next meeting is Wednesday the 26th, so that should be fine. Wednesday instead of Monday. Yes. yes. Yeah. And, and if there are any, um, any uh, logistical problems with that holiday, I'll work them out with. So the, the, the one other that. thing that came in the mail that we didn't discuss was the letter from the Attorney General. Um, Oh, right. And, and, and I thought that that was really significant. Um, first of all, first of all, how detailed and how much information and, was in it. And, and in background, this is, this is approving a couple of the articles that they had, uh, had taken some more time to approve from the last town meeting. So all of the articles have now been approved from the last town meeting. That includes these two, the large-scale construction law and the safe community bylaw. Those were approved, uh, but it, but the, the, the pipeline the, the the pipeline one they approved it, but they listed quite a few issues with it and um, and things that are necessary uh, further actions that are necessary if you ever have to use that. Um, that's like a roadmap for how to get sued less, but. Um, but there was a couple of clauses in there when they said we can't declare that federal law would preempt this because we're not federal. But if mm. it ever goes to court, federal law is going to preempt. They, they sort of there was a couple of clauses where they really indicated they were pro problematic, but that since they're not a court, they're not going to disapprove it. But what I want to talk about was the safe city bylaw because um, we we had uh, a member of town government um, publish you know information that. The, by, the safe city bylaw certainly was unconstitutional, certainly violated state law. So I thought it would be um, useful to get the facts out that, uh, you know, and that we should submit that to the recorder um, and, so, you know, that, you know, there's the state saying it is constitutional. And some portion and, of it on our website. Right. I mean, but I, I thought that that, the, 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 the note addressing, the, the, the part of the Attorney General letter addressing the safe city by law in particular um, would be good just to sort of heal that all together and just sort of, because there's still that big, big meatball out there. Well, you know, we were told that that might be problems, leak, whatever. So that's, yeah, yeah. so I'd, I'd kind of like to, just to see that, that out in the town that, um, 
Yeah. Yeah. I thought the letter in particular was very approving of that. I thought the tone of the letter in particular when it came to discussing that was... Yeah, they definitely had read our bylaws inside and out. Oh, yeah. And understood them yeah. very well. I was impressed. Yeah. Well, that's okay. it for the meeting. Yep. Motion to adjourn? Yes. Second. Aye, aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you.